the moon, modern day science is fascinated with it, and spiritually inclined humans strive to deeply connect with it. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Desiree. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to give you five effective ways that you can track and observe the moon because right now, at this very moment, it is influencing you. So stay tuned. Before I give you an information overload on the five effective ways on how to track and observe the moon, there are two things that I want to note. The first one is, is there is no right or wrong way to track and observe the moon. You're going to notice in this video, I'm going to give you an extremely left brain perspective and an extremely right brain perspective and everything in between. And the second thing that I want to take note here is that you can use one method or you can use all methods or you can make up your own method using different aspects of these five different ways. So now that we have those two disclosures out of the way, Way, let's talk about the basic meaning of the moon and the history of moon observation very briefly. The basic things that we understand about the moon is that it gets big and it gets small. It comes and it goes. Sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't. Because of the closeness to the earth, it is gravitationally influencing the tide. And we know that the moon reflects sunlight, it does not absorb it, and it's important that you know that the moon has eight phases. And it takes approximately the moon 27 to 28 days, give or take half a day, to actually go through the whole moon cycle or through the whole eight phases. So now let's highlight the history of moon observation. According to Common History and a Wikipedia page, it is said that the Babylonians were the first to track and observe the moon mathematically around 1,000 years BCE or 1,000 years BC. Although Vedic astrology also tracks and observes the moon and that's dated around 5,000 years ago. And according to scientific sources, it is believed that moon tracking and observation dates all the way back to 15,000 years ago. However, there is the potential that moon tracking and moon observation dates all the way back to 30,000 years ago. So now we know that the moon gets big and the moon gets small and humans have been fascinated with observing and tracking the moon and writing it on cable walls from 15,000 years ago, 30,000 years ago, but more likely it probably dates older than that. So let's get into the five effective ways that you can begin to track and observe the moon to see how it's influencing you in modern day. So the first effective way to track and observe the moon is to simply look at it. Now remember the moon takes about 27 to 28 days to actually go through the full moon cycle. So if you're just going outside or you're looking out a window and you're tracking and observing the moon, you're going to want to make sure that you're doing this for that whole time, 27 to 28 days. And as you are observing the moon during this 27 to 28 days, you're going to want to journal down what you're feeling, what you're thinking, and how you think or how you feel that the moon is influencing you. And something you might want to keep in mind or to test for yourself is it is believed that as the moon is getting bigger that you're going to have more extroverted qualities and as the moon is getting smaller you're going to have more introverted qualities so this is a really great starting point if you are new to moon tracking so as you are tracking the moon in the sky you may notice that you want to have some more interpretations or some more guidance on some actual meanings of what's going on so this brings me to the second effective way to observe and track the moon and that is strictly from a left brain scientific perspective there's a really great article from sciencing.com and i'll link it down below that really outlines how to track and observe the moon. But primarily, if you're going to use a scientific method in tracking and understanding the moon, you are going to have to understand the eight phases, not necessarily the spiritual meanings of the eight phases, but just the you know common understanding of the phases that the moon goes through. There are a lot of apps that you can download that will show you the position of the moon based on your location, and then also the phases of the moon as well. And some other observations of the moon include measuring the height above the horizon, identifying the moon position regarding east to west, journaling down the time of the moon rise and the moon set, comparing the moon to a landmark, identifying the moon phase, observing the astrological sign that the moon is in, and also looking at the moon position in relation to other celestial bodies. And if you're interested in a book or a guide to help you understand the positions of the moon without having to do all of the calculations and go from app to app, you can get an ephemeris. And they usually come usually by the year and it outlines the position of the moon and the constellations. And there's even some wonderful things that you can jot down. So let's get into some other ways that you can track and observe the moon that use more of an esoteric and spiritual meaning. And that is number three, and that's tracking and observing the moon through a spiritual perspective. So tracking and observing the moon through spiritual perspective is really really popular and there are many ways to actually do this now it's really important that you understand that spirituality in this sense when I'm talking about moon tracking and moon observation is not the same as uh, 
tracking the moon or understanding the moon from a religious perspective. Now, there are many religions that have moon gods and moon goddesses. The difference here is that the moon goddesses are actually just a representation of what the moon means and the moon energy. It's not necessarily using these gods and goddesses to track and observe the moon. Rather, you want to look more from a spiritual or abstract perspective when we're talking about tracking and observing the moon. So it's not from a religious perspective, it's more of a spiritual perspective. And be sure to check out the spiritual meaning of the eight moon phases video right after this one so that way you can get a better understanding. So as we're talking about tracking and observing the moon from a spiritual perspective, I really just want to touch base on Wicca or focus more on Wicca, which stems from paganism and this is witchcraft. Primarily in Wicca there is the triple goddess and what this represents is the maiden, the mother, and the crone and this represents birth, life, and death. What's so great about the Wiccan community or if you're interested in doing a little bit more witchcraft is that there is a lot of information and there's a really great community based upon these spiritual practices and these spiritual rituals. So if you wanted to maximize and understand the lunar energies and track the moon, you can work with other people and connect with other people that are doing specific rituals during the full moon or the new moon and really working with the lunar energies and what they represent. So number four, observing and tracking the moon travel in astrology. So this is probably something that most people are familiar with because that's exactly what astrology is. It's looking at the planets and then observing and tracking their positions. Now the difference between astrology versus astronomy is the actual meanings that astrology places on the position of the planets and the moon travels. This kind of gives it a little bit more flavor, but because it gives it a little bit more flavor and it has a lot more meanings, it is looked at as kind of like a pseudoscience or an esoteric science. Now, if you're interested in astrology and you're interested in the meanings of the positions and how it's influencing you, then you may have already noticed that there are different forms of astrology, which can be a little bit confusing because they do track the moon differently. In astrology, the basic representation of the moon it represents our emotions. It can represent our mind. It can represent um, our mother. So again, it has this feminine quality to it, but it's more or less about the emotions and the mind when we're talking about astrology. So I'm going to give you the top astrological sciences or practices that you're going to find if you did a YouTube search or you did a Google search. Now, the first one you're going to come across is Western astrology. Now, if you're tracking the moon through Western astrology, what you're going to notice is that the moon is going to go through the whole astrological wheel or around the whole astrological wheel every 27 to 28 days during this moon cycle. Now, even though in Western astrology, the first zodiac sign is Aries, the new moon is not always going to start with Aries. It can start anywhere on the zodiac wheel, but during its eight phases or during its uh, 27 to 28 day cycle, it is going to make a full circle, full 360, and it's going to go through each one of these signs. So as you're tracking the moon in Western astrology, you're going to want to take note of where the moon is at, like what astrological sign it's in. So it could be Aries, Gemini, and then see if that is influencing you. The next way to track and observe the moon through astrology is through Vedic astrology. And what's so interesting about Vedic astrology is that it's the from Indian culture, Indian tradition, and there's a lot of texts from the Rig Vedas and some mythological stories that actually tie into the moon. Specifically, I'm talking about the 27 nakshatras, and they're considered to be lunar mansions. And each nakshatra or each lunar mansion has a very specific meaning. And tracking the moon from Vedic astrology really just gives you more of an in-depth look of each constellation, what it means, and then also some history history involved in it and some culture if that's something that you're interested in. So the fifth way to track and observe the moon is through human design. Now I already made a video on how to track the moon in human design but for the sake of this video I'm going to give you a brief overview of what human design actually is. And Now human design is something that a lot of people are not really familiar with or they really don't understand it. It often gets the label as a pseudoscience or esoteric science primarily because it takes the uh, western astrology, the I Ching, and the Kabbalah. It combines it together to create a science or a mechanics of not only yourself, but also the rest of the world. So what's important for you to know if you're interested in tracking the moon and observing the moon through human design is that the moon is going to go through the 64 gates or the 64 hexagrams. This is the part of human design that is directly derived from the I Ching. Now human design uses those 64 hexagrams and combines it with the information and knowledge with the 64 codons in common science and biology. So as we're talking about the moon being in a specific gate, we are talking about 
about it having a scientific and a biological impact on your body, as well as having an abstract or spiritual perspective as well. But you can begin to track and observe the moon as it's going around this mandala wheel and it is activating each gate. As the moon is going through all 64 gates during this time or during the moon cycle, you're going to notice that it's going to be a little bit more difficult to track every single gate because this means that the moon activates and transits a gate every eight to ten hours and if you're going to consciously track the moon during this time you're going to miss out because you have to sleep and you have other things to do so this is why it is said that you know human design does take a long time to fully understand it it could take years it could take a whole lifetime to really understand the depth and the meaning of each gate so hopefully that wasn't too much of an information overload be sure to comment below on how you track and observe the moon and that's it that's all i got for you guys so i'll see you in the future bye